I've always felt different. I've always seen things, but when I tried to express them as a child, I was always told to ignore it. There were people that I didn't know that came to me and said, I have this message that I keep getting that I have to deliver to you. All of a sudden, out of the shadows, a homeless man just jumped right in front of me, and he said, I'm a soul just like you. I love it. I wanted to understand the universe and who and what we are and what are we doing here. Well, we're all part of this amazing soul wave tapping into each other. This was a major life changer. You are a light. You have helped me a ton. Thank you. You've given me the courage to live more from my soul. Millions of people are awakening. So wake up with Michelle Miche. Be pleased to hear the best-selling authors and experts in the fields of cutting-edge self-help, personal growth, metaphysics, and spirituality. The soul path of awakening. Understand what living awake is. Hello, radiant soul light beings. Hello, hello. Uh, if you happen to be new to this radio show, this podcast, welcome. It's great to have you here. Happy Wednesday, Wisdom Wednesday, Wonder Wednesday, everyone. Um, if you are new and you are going, how does this work? You can listen in the chat if you sign up, um, just do a little registration thing, name and email, I believe. Uh, you can also ask questions in the chat. If you want to listen by phone, that number is 347-539-5122, 347 539 uh, 5122. Now, if you have a question, a comment, or you want a reading, press 1 on the keypad. 347-539-5122. Press 1 on the keypad to get on air. I uh, want to thank everyone that has been leaving the wonderful five stars on Apple Podcasts. Thank you very much. Five stars on Spotify. I appreciate you, and some of you have left the most heartfelt appreciation comments on Apple Podcasts, I just want to thank you. Thank you so much. Um, if I had your emails, I would thank you personally. Um, but I do really appreciate it. It keeps me humming, keeps me humming, and uh, just it's a little joy. It's a little joy bubble, like a little bubble, a little bubble sent to me. Um, also, I um, want to invite everyone to please subscribe to Soul Insights and Tarot on YouTube, as well as Awakenings with Michelle Mache on YouTube. Uh, there's more stuff coming on YouTube. I've gotten some people asking for some other types of um, soul support, as I call it. I guess in the regular world, they call it content, a content creator. A conscious content creator. How about you? Uh, but I call it soul path tools and soul expression. Not really wild about the word content. I mean, content's cool, but it just sounds so like, hey, we need some content in this, you know, magazine. We need some content over here. What? What you got any content? So I don't know. Anyway, that's my little button on that. I see a lot of people in the queue uh, on the phone lines, on the switchboard, whatever you want. Yeah, switchboard, I guess it's called. So if you have a question, a comment, or you want a reading, please press one. Numero uno. Uno numero. All right. Uh, we have a guest, second half of the program. I just want to touch on something, then we're going to get to callers. 347 539 5122. Press one on the keypad. Many of you know we're doing a big kind of a manifestation kickoff here. Um, some of you that work with me privately and also on Patreon, our Soul Awakening community on Patreon and Soul Study, Self Study, Soul Study, um, as well as here, I do cover it here as well, not as in depth, but I do cover it here, that I'm, as a psychic channel, um, trans channel and conscious channel, I look at trends, and in fact, my workshops, seminars, things, classes I do, I I tune in to see what are the what are the trends, what's the universal trend, and I connect with the guides, the spiritual hierarchy, and over souls, to see what's coming up. And so a lot of you know, because I know I have a lot of people that follow me on um, YouTube and do my readings at Soul Insights and Tarot as well as Patreon. You know that. We're doing a lot right now with Chaos Magic. And some people have even told me, some of my clients have told me, They've heard that more, or it's come up in their feed. I, I think somebody in the chat that has come up in their feed, uh, one of them was a podcast. Uh, one of my clients was watching a podcast, and they started talking about 
uh, chaos and chaos magic. Um, some people are saying they've seen things lately on chaos theory or that there's a lot of chaos in the world and everybody goes, oh, ooh, oh. No, that's good, gang. That's good, folks. So, folks, that's good. That's good. Chaos, random access memory. Like you got a lot of memory on your computer, right? You got a lot of random access memory, RAM. What can you do with that? You can do a lot. You can put programs on there. You can run things. You can manifest things. So chaos, yes, it can be overwhelming. You have to have ways to center, like the eye of the storm, to be in the eye of the storm. But chaos means there's a lot of creative energy. It's... It's the magic that happens before the universe starts putting things into form and locking things in. So, in a way, you can kind of universally get away with a lot of stuff. Yeah, you can kind of bend time. You can stretch things. There's a lot you can do personally and helping in the in the world, in the collective. 3D, 4D consciousness. Um, chaos magic means that the veils are thinner. We've We've lost a lot of veils. A lot of veils have dissolved which is just the vibrational frequency between dimensions. But when there's chaos, there's less that's in form. Everything is in flux, right? It's, it's up in the air. And it, it's kind of like when you go in your, you know, your art room and you, what do I do? Do I do, a, you know, do I make some pottery? Do I, do I do ceramics? Do I paint? Or you start painting or you start sketching, but you don't know what it is yet. Because all manifestation is, is taking the random access energy, <laughs> memory, whatever. It is memory. It's past, present, and future memory. And putting it into form. It's putting, like when you have ideas, you know, you're trying to create something or make something. You want to, you know, you want to do an online platform or, you you know, you want to create something, a class, a workshop. You want to, you know, you want to make an, create an app or you want, whatever it is you're putting together, you, you have to get the ingredients. Oh, okay, I have to have a home page. If I'm going to do a website, I've got to have a home page. What else do I need? I need this. Oh, got to have an ad, a phone number. I've got to talk about what I do. I've got to do this. I got, oh, you know, if I, like writing a book. You've got to pull all the ingredients. That's the chaos. And out of that chaos and confusion comes new order. There is a new order. I know a lot of people are freaking out of one world order and new order, but there is a new order Tasha Blue. Yeah, well, we're all guided by spirit, Tasha Blue. <laughs> well, I'd like to think I am. But there's a way to read the trends, and that's why we have tools, divination tools, is to help us, or astrology, that's or numerology. Those are just all ways of looking at us as the chaotic, energetic beings, having all these different things going on, and putting it in some kind of map or readable order. And the good thing about doing this and the fun thing for me is now then you move into creation. You move in co-creation with the all that is or God or spirit as we're meant to do. That's our, that's actually our count. That is us. We are an aspect of God or the all that is, but it's also as a dimension of that, it's our, it's our true counterpart. How do you want to live your reality? Because you're not just creating your reality for you. You're creating it for those seven generations that come after you. It's about leaving a better world. So that's when you move into conscious creation. You realize this gift that you have. It's just like within us we have imaginal cells. These cells kind of are encoded and they decode or detonate, if you will, when, when we're up-leveling, you know, when we move from crawling to walking, right? There's imaginal cells within us that are programmed with the next level of information, of intelligence, and how to do it. All species have that. But then we are the imaginal cells on the universe. Usu used to not like the word chaos, but think it's now my friend because of seeing what can grow out of it. Yeah, Sue, yeah. Well, that's why I've been using it a lot, and I learned this in my alchemy training um, as well as alchemical hypnotherapy we worked with chaos and in fact that saying i don't know where he got it but one of my teachers dr han he would always say i i've changed it a little bit but he used to say out of chaos comes creation and out of confusion comes new order i put them to i put them together but 
I wish I had coined that. I didn't. But it, it is a it is a metaphysical principle when you understand that within the there is a randomness, there is accidents, there are things that happen, there is chaos, there is but, but there is within the chaos is order that is coming together. So things that are random or by chance sometimes aren't so random or aren't by chance. Or we or you really learn as metaphysicians and spiritualists and occultists. Um, esotericists, right, behind the scenes and alchemists, how do I use what's there? That's like this download I got the other day, and I think I read it in Patreon. I'll, I'll see. And I'm going to leave you guys with this, and then we're going to get to callers, because this was pretty profound from God. Uh, let me see. From God Consciousness. It doesn't have to be what you want. And this is about your circumstances. It is what it is. Look for the possibilities and what is. In other words, the miracle is not trying to change your circumstances. It's like as you align to the energy of your circumstances and you work within your circumstances, they change. Too many people, and myself included, I've been there. I don't like this. I don't want this. I don't. We spend time in resistance, which leave, leaves us locked in the extremes of polarity. We're just resisting the polarity, and what we what we resist persists. It just keeps persisting, and we keep seeing what we don't want and experiences what we don't want because that becomes the fight. It's like trying to argue with someone or fight with someone when they're not ready to hear your side. It does no good, and the universe is like that. If if, if this is the trend. This is why I like connecting into psychic trends, and I I feel blessed to – I'll give an example, and I'm not going to deep dive into it because a lot of you have heard this. I know we have a lot of new listeners. But the whole pandemic, I predicted in 2017, everything that happened. I had four days of visions, and I told people I was working with. I told my assistant. um, I told some close friends. And so I saw what was coming. And so I proceeded to tell my clients, you need to have an online present. Don't just try to do workshops. Don't just try to be in the yoga studio. You don't need to get an office. You're not going to be able to go in the office. You're not going to be able to work. I saw the vaccine, the passport, everything, 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 everything I was shown. So I'm reading the trend. I'm getting that information. I'm not fearful of it, but I'm like, hey, guys, this is what's coming up. Here's a way to prepare. And so we have those signs all the time, and our higher self is trying to guide us all the time by signs, symbols, messages. It works within the archetypal energy of the universe. Um, and one of those archetypal images is tarot is one, of course, numerology, the astrology. But dream, signs, symbols, image, that's how the nature works. It doesn't kind of sit down and give you a whole, you know, and say, now this is going to happen, now that, and you need to do that. You know, you got to fill in some blanks. So it's not to resist what's going on. There's always a higher purpose, even if we don't see it. So God said it doesn't have to be what you want. Even if you get a certain gift or circumstance in your life, it doesn't have to be what you want. Don't lament it. How can you use that? Because if you use that energy, you will begin to transmute it and parlay it more and more into what you want. That's the magician in the tarot, making the less ideal more ideal and more ideal, taking what's less ideal and making it more and more ideal. So right now, the creative urge, or the urge of God, the all that is, creative infinite intelligence is saying, look for the possibilities where you are right now and what's happening in your life. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the chaos. There's a lot of messages, so it can sometimes be hard to decipher, which is one of the things that we do in the Soul Path Journey or Patreon um, group. And also some people are doing private mentoring with me through Patreon. We look at, okay, how do we decipher this? How do we pick? And for me, it's fun. Maybe it's not for a lot of people, but I feel very blessed and extra alive when I'm seeing the signs and symbols and I feel myself being led, spirit-led, and fueled by my soul. I'm getting that soul juice and following my soul call. And that's how we're going to live more and more. You can see right now the breakdown in the world, not just governmentally, 
but influencers, so quote unquote influencers, what I'm not wild about that name either. I mean, how arrogant. I saw some, some time, one time somebody had on their profile, I'm an influencer. What does that mean? What? I'm a guru. What does that mean? Guru means teacher in the Eastern tradition, but what are you meaning by that? Celebrities. You're seeing the infighting between different celebrities, different quote-unquote influencers, different comedians, musicians, people that are celebrity or high profile. Because the soul is coming through, the next creation needs to be more by the soul and less by wounding and less by the ego. This is at where the meek inherit the earth. And I'm not getting biblical, maybe a little bit, but New Age, New Age by all. But, but it's true. Those that aren't, it's not to be, you know, weak. The weakness is those that are surrendering to their soul, their higher, through their higher self. It's like, are you connecting into your soul? Those are the creations that are coming up more now. The, the universe really wants to support what is more soul-fueled, spirit-led? What is more of the blueprint of the soul? What's more authentic? What's more genuine? And also, what is good for more people than just one or two or the small few or the 1% or half of you know 1% or 10%? It's like it's time for people to step into their empowerment and understand that you know everyone, to some degree, is a leader in their own, whether it's you know, in an office or groups or family or online or communities, you're your leader in your own life. You have to connect into your own inner authority. So you're going to see a lot of, I, I'm see infighting between these people in systems, very public systems, whether it's, um, you know, TV studios, you know, Netflix, Amazon companies, you know, government against the company, other other cities, states, uh, nations. You see it already. We are essentially ostensibly in this World War III. Fighting for this external power, temporal power, that's very fleeting because they don't know what else to do in this chaos. This chaos is bringing people to get kind of graspy, grasping at things, grasping, grasping, grasping at things straws instead of going in and going, what do I really need and what? Now, let me just be honest. Everything that happens in this world has a vibrational component, you know, a, a vibrational energetic complex of frequencies. There's a, there's a, a design there, blueprint, template, a matrix. And so it's needed and necessary. When it, when it starts losing its juice, as I call the, the, temp, the juice of spirit, it either lessens in importance it gets smaller, it fades away, it dissolves, and it becomes extinct. You're going to see that more. So it's not that these things are bad. It's just been part of the old paradigm, the old matrix. We're creating a new matrix, a new design that's coming in. Think of it like the design of a kaleidoscope. Everything has a matrix or a design to it. And at the, at the, at the nucleus of your design is your soul. So, in a way, the soul of Earth is changing the blueprint. You know, it's more of the soul coming through. It's it's more of the light coming through, less muddled energy. So that that's creating a lot of um, angst and graspy energy, um, but it's also revealing the soul or spiritual essence more too. That's also cut a neck and neck um anyway let's get to callers shall we three four seven five three nine five one two two yeah tasha blue so many strange dreams yeah because that's because spirit god whomever you're working with or whatever god is an energy is the energetic principle the all that is the creative infinite innate intelligence life itself but whatever term you're using some of you are traveling. Some of you are doing astral travel. Some of you are traveling in the future to where you're going to be going. Some of you are traveling where you live other dimensionally and having and connecting to those experiences. A lot of people in the dream state right now are getting a lot of messages and also clearing a lot of ancestral timelines or timelines based on earth wounding. So there's a lot going on right now on the in the dreamscape. 
Okay. 347-539-5122 is the number. Press 1 on your keypad to get on air. Hi, you're on air. Hello. Hello. Hi, you're on air. Hello. Yeah, hi. Hi. Wow, I hi, was the who's first this? one. I wasn't expecting that. You are <laughs> My name is first Alexis. one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Alexis. How are you, Michelle? Alexis, I'm doing great, and I'm honored to talk to you. Good to connect. Likewise. Thank you so much. Um, my question today is about my connection with this man in my life, Miles. And okay. yeah, I'm just curious what comes through. Okay. Well, first of all, I get kind of new. New for both of you. Uh-huh. Uh, let's see, Miles. I get both of you kind of, it's new for, I don't know, like sheepish energy, a little bit... Um, I think you both are wondering where it could go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it is saying to keep... Do you normally kind of jump in? Because it's saying to there's a deep connection, but to keep it light, to be open for now. Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Yeah, and there could be... Um, okay, I'm getting a little more with his energy. Why is he a little? Are you getting? I I get him like sheep, like happy, kind of a little giddy about the connection. Uh huh. But then I also he has a, a like a detach a way of kind of being aloof also. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What is so that's kind of tripping you up? Like he's there. Let me ask. What the heck's going on? Let's do this. Well, he's definitely looking long range, and it's definitely showing he's looking at something also a lot with either career, career moves. Oh, he doesn't want mm-hmm. anything to throw him off his game. He doesn't want anything that throws him <laughs> off his game or his path. So he's a little, he's a little, free, he's a little cautious. Maybe Capricorn yeah. energy. I get Gemini or Capricorn. Yeah, he could be a little fickle. But I feel like the detachment is like he's trying to pace himself. He's trying to pace the yeah. relationship. That tracks for sure. Okay, what are his feelings? Well, he's pacing, but I mean, there's definitely a connection there. I definitely feel he feels like you're very. Uh, you know, feminine, womanly, nurturing. He definitely, there's feelings. There's definitely, he's got feels for you. That's for sure. There's feelings there. <laughs> uh, he gets in his feels. But he's definitely, like, trying. Maybe, I don't know about you. I, I feel like he went in the soup one time in relationship and it threw a bunch of stuff off. So I feel like he's really trying to, you know, Take it slow, see where it goes, don't get ahead of things. That's my guess yes. with it. Did you say and rinse in the soup? Yeah. Is that weird? That's such a funny yeah. expression. I've never heard that before. I haven't either. I haven't either. I've never <laughs> used that. He went in the soup. Yeah, I've never used it. This is the first time it's come through. So I don't know if somebody told him that or he has that expression. Sometimes I say things and then people will tell me, oh, my God, that's what they said. But, yeah, I feel like he, I don't know, whatever this relationship was, it left an impact. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, that's so funny that you say that. He, It's been a couple of months now, but he did just get out of a relationship in the end of last year and is, uh, I think, still reckoning with some of the fallout of all of that. We've been friends yeah. now for several years, but this is the first time we've ever been living in the same town, both been single at the same time, and it's oh, kind of just like, oh, that's why I was getting, because oh. I was going to ask you if there was, if you had dated him before, because it's showing a past connection, so. No, but we've been friends for years, yeah. Okay, okay, so that's why, I don't know, he's, um. You might want to keep it light or even date other people for a while just because I do feel the friendship's very strong and he definitely wants to be friends and close. But you're right. He yeah. is still reeling from this thing. 
Let's see the best perspective for you. Well, it still shows you guys hanging out, whether you call it dating or kind of building something. But it's going to be slow, and I think it's because of this situation. Yeah. I get a lot of Capricorn energy. I get like there's definitely connection. There's definitely, you know, feelings. And, and probably now that you told me that, um, you know, that you were friends, there's genuine care there. But this right. other thing threw him for a loop. Yeah, and it's funny that and you so say he, that, um, you know, being so focused. He just actually, I live in the mountains of North Carolina, and he just actually purchased a big chunk of land to like start this whole life project and it's a it's a really oh. beautiful thing but it's going to be a lot of work on him so I know that's definitely that something that he's very focused on. He's fired up about that. Yeah. Career project something. Yeah. In business, making something a business. And uh he's got mm-hmm. a good head on his shoulders. That's for sure. Yeah, he's a good man. Yeah, I feel so too. I think I think if you know, if time is not an element and pushing, he would be the type that if if something keeps showing up, and I mean both of you, if if if, if something keeps working, then he'll go for it. I think he went out of character <laughs> with this other person. I think he jumped in, or maybe you know, maybe he, oh, I'm going to be the romantic. T- you know, I'm just going to go for it. You know. And it yeah. just was not a good match at all. It just really was not on the same page. I don't feel that she was supportive of him. I just feel it was like, totally. oh, oh, my God. Wrong, totally, totally. Wrong match and required too much attention and pulling on him energetically. And, yeah, so I think he's, like, you know, going back to, you know, he's probably read stuff or watched videos. What are the ten things to watch out for? <laughs> Kidding you. Or how do you be in relationship? You know, how, take it slow. What should you look for? What's a good because re- he he's definitely a researcher. Yeah. So it wouldn't surprise me to see him. Uh, but that's what I get for you. That's what I get. I think with this connection. Amazing. You Thank know. you so much, Michelle. You're welcome. Great to connect. Bye. Bye. All right, gang, 347-539-5122 is the number. Press 1 on your keypad if you have a question or a comment. Got another one coming up here. Hi, you're on air. You're on air. Hello. Hello. Hi, you're on air. Oh, hi. (laughs) Hi, this is Miranda. Hi, Miranda. Welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, we talked in the yeah. past uh, of several months ago regarding my condo, and you kept seeing it yeah. selling, and it never did, unfortunately. Um, so yeah. now it's back on the market, and I'm wondering what you see Go. around it. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think I told you to put it back on in spring, so you just put it on, yeah. right? I remember. Uh, your yeah, energy. it's been about a couple of weeks now, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so let's look and see. Yeah, I think you and you had put it on. I didn't see it selling. I said put it back on in the spring. And I don't know that we're yet in spring. We're not in spring until the 20th or 21st of this. Yeah, Yeah, 20th. This is the time everybody starts listening, though. Okay, well, I'm just telling you. I'm just telling what I'm getting. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, I know I've done my research. Okay. (laughs) Okay, well... Miranda, you had put it on in the wintertime, so... If I recall, I'm recalling the whole yeah, story Yeah, the now. first time. Yes, absolutely. Well, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, my, it's, so I still I see it selling. Said, I still see chance. it selling. <laughs> yeah, and I, mm-hmm. I just heard put it on in the springtime. Mm-hmm. Um, selling the property. Maybe May, June. All I heard was put it on in the springtime. I'm still getting that message. And you just told me mm-hmm. you already put it on. Let's mm-hmm. see what's coming up for the selling of the property. Oh, it's definitely going to sell. Okay. I, 
I think you're going to get more buzz on it May, June. Oh, I hope and, it doesn't take that long. <laughs> okay, well, okay. <laughs> Keep us posted, Miranda, okay? Keep us posted. Okay. Take so you care. can see it selling, but in May, June, is that I don't know. I said I've started to do mm-hmm. the – I just started – what happens mm-hmm. when I have to explain stuff, the vibrational frequency goes. Because I'm, I'm just I saying see. what I get psychically. I'm not thinking, like, rationally, mm-hmm. you know, like using right, the logic right. mind, the beta consciousness. Understand. I'm trying to keep right. my vibrational frequency up to get uh, psychic information, to get the best information mm-hmm. I can. It's definitely mm-hmm. going to sell. Maybe there's some learning lesson here for you. I don't know. I mean, I, I know you really want to sell it, and I get it. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't think you're going to have it a whole another year. I felt yeah. things more moving May June. Um, I'm getting mm-hmm. a couple messages here. I'm getting I'm getting Leo time. I'm also mm-hmm. getting June, and then psychically I heard May June things move. So mm-hmm. now there could be a divine intervention. I don't know, but yeah, my original psychic reading for you was. Put it on. You should put it on the market in. I heard springtime. Springtime. It's not yeah. even yet springtime. So right. That's what I'm getting. But it. It. I don't see you there a whole nother year. So that should bring right. some some relief, relief. to you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, absolutely. No. Yeah. Let's yeah. see. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of uh, buzz. At least I mean, people are coming and inquiring. Um, so oh, that's good. encouraging. Good, good, good. Yeah, and it could yeah. be that maybe you know I move around May. Who knows? Um, so yeah, May June time frame. So I'm hoping for the best. Yeah. I'll let you know. Thank you. Yeah, keep us posted and just know it's it's going. Sometimes things it's going. take longer for. Yeah. yeah for different reasons. For things. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, things have yeah. to fall into place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, but you'll know you're ready. Okay. You you won't be you won't be lamenting having to pack. You'll you'll be ready to go. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, I want to be excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, Miranda. Thank take you. care. Bye. You too. Bye. You're welcome. Bye. Okay, gang. Three four seven five three nine five one two two is the number. Let's see. Sue in the chat. I'm hoping. Let's see what's coming up for Sue. Oh yeah, Sue. It's going. There may even be some movement or something in in April. So I don't know if you're putting it on the market in April, Sue, in the chat. But uh, it's showing destiny issue. It'll happen quite quickly. This house going to sell. Let's see, when is it going to sell? Yeah, I keep getting traction with you, Sue, in the chat in April. So I don't know if that's when it sells and then it takes, a, if you do a longer closing, you know, standard closing or what. But it does, it shows you out of there. I get Uranus, Uranus energy. Net, uh, we got... Uh, Uranus and Cancer, if I roll the dice, Uranus and Cancer in the fourth house. That is a definite move and quick. So it's not going to be a long time for you. Jay's in the house. Hello, Jay. Howdy. (laughs) Hello, everyone. Um, Yeah, so that's definitely going. Ah, any other callers? Three four seven five three nine five one two two or questions in the chat? Call in. Yeah, I never know why. Uh, I know Jay finally here. It's, you've been a minute or two. I know. I haven't seen you in a bit. In the chat, it's good to see you. Yeah, I never know. I just tune in psychic. That's something to know, guys. This is why sometimes even in, um, like, I'll set up sessions, because you're accessing a different part of the brain to do a psychic reading, to tune in. Um, Let's see. Okay, 803, did you have another question? I see a little, your hand up, so I'll go there. Let's see, Tasha, let's see. Tasha, Tasha, in the chat. Yeah, you can ask questions in the chat as well. Okay, so she's looking at energy around relationship. Let's see, Tasha Blue in relationship. 
Oh, yeah. Now, there could be someone at a distance or somehow different from you. I'm getting a six out June. Let's see. I'm wondering if it's someone online or you meet someone while you're traveling or get back from traveling or they're traveling. Let's see. What's the best person? Let's see. Tasha to take in relationship. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Um, it's funny, that May-June period, I've, Gemini, I've seen a lot of energy shifting. Now, maybe that's because we've got a um, lunar eclipse, penumbral lunar eclipse on the 25th of this month um, in Libra. There could be something, um, you know, going on with that that's that's pushing people pushing kind of new directions on people Let me ask Tasha about dating okay getting out there more now I'm feeling somebody left if you can call in call in yeah I the eclipses that's right Sue I think so that could be the movement for everyone yeah uh, oh, thanks. I always get the travel and moving in your pick a cards. Oh, interesting, Tasha. Yeah, they're either moving or you're traveling. And sometimes when I see, sometimes it is meeting somebody obviously while you're traveling or on vacation. But sometimes it could be right before you leave or right before you come back. And, and a lot of times when I see travel or I get travel, that tells me something. There's some kind of movement or something's up in the air. Like you could be extra busy, there could be more movement. Um, but I do get, Tasha, that's funny you keep getting travel with the pick-up cards because that's what I'm getting for you right now. Tasha Blue, going to be dating someone. Let's see, what's going on Tasha? I almost feel like you're going to move and you're going to be in a different area. I'm showing a little bit of restriction with money or financially, or you're going to be putting money aside for something. Right now, I'm getting a lot with your career and money or finance or investment or insurance or looking ahead and structuring something or planning something. So let's ask for starting to date. I'm wondering if someone introduces you or you meet someone out and about or traveling It's a lot with you with money and investments. Oh, yes, across to another country. That might be why, Tasha, that the person, it's around the move. Oh, your younger cat, Jay, has been sick, been to the vet, and I'm hoping she'll pull through. What's really wrong with her? What's coming up? Oh, that's hard to do without you kind of calling in. Let me connect into the energy. Younger cat, is it Kitty? Yeah, Tasha, are you looking at moving? Let's see. Super silence cat. Let's see with the cat. Oh, they'll get to the bottom of it. I'm wondering, do you have something? Do you have Libra rising? Because there's your six houses being. Um, they're going to get to the bottom of it and it get handled, but it is going to take a little bit of it, more doctor's visits, vet, vet visits, or tests. I feel like there could be blood. Either they have to take blood work or it's something in the blood is what I'm getting. And it could have been some, something there for a while. Oh, that's why Libra rising, that's what I thought. Because sixth house, um, so... Your sixth house is being affected, and sometimes that could affect our, your health or pets. It can cause Saturn is um, transiting, you know, is in Pisces right now, transiting. If you're in Libra rising and transiting your sixth house, that's health, that's pets. But I do feel you're going to get to the bottom of it. But it could be a while. I, I, I'm not going to guess, but I feel like either there is something in the blood or there's blood work and it shows up in the blood work or some particular blood test, internal test. Oh, she lost three pounds and she started at 13 a month ago. Oh, I'm so sorry, Jay. I'll put her in my, my prayer circle. Yeah, Tasha, that's interesting about the move movement. 
Okay, I don't know if you had another question here, but we got time because our, ge- our guest isn't here yet. Our guest will be calling in a bit. So if anybody has a question, a comment, or wants a reading, press 1 on your keypad. Hi, hey, did you have a question? Hi. Yes, Hi, I Alexis. did. I feel so lucky. Okay. Um, it was so funny. I, know, I was I'm kind like... of wavering. I was <laughs> wavering between the two questions, and I'm like, wow, I get to do both. And I usually am you not free on both. Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> So it's great. Um, I'm curious. I am really kind of wanting to dive into the subject of career. I work for myself as a body worker and an astrology worker, and I teach breath work as well. And I've been a body worker for 11 years now, and I love it so much. It's uh, what I do mostly. It's like my bread and butter in my business. But I'm really trying to shift that out of Are you trying to shift into astrology more? Well, that's kind of the question. Astrology and breath work are the other things that I offer, well, and I kind both. of have this. Yeah, absolutely. But I, and, but and really my question is, like, is it in person or is it online? Oh, it doesn't matter. Whatever. You could do a lot. I would. <laughs> I am telling anybody to do. make sure you have a very strong online presence. And another yeah. thing that I predicted, and in fact, when I was working with MentorCam doing um, – mentoring from them it's an app and um uh-huh. yeah. i was doing readings all these big ceo all these big business and football players and athletes and i don't know gold what is it called gold winners gold cup winners or whatever um yeah. anyway i did it for a while but i had i know it's so weird i'm like i would look on there and going what am i doing here but it worked and i i got to talk to the ceo and founder of the company and he was amazing we had a great conversation and I think it was with him. Well, that was a different conversation. But I had with one one of the people that quote unquote onboarded me and got me there. When the panty was lifting, as I call it, I told them. I said, "Oh no, that was with you. That was with another company. Sorry, another company I was working with, corporate company." Mm-hmm. And I said, "Look, I don't see people going back in person like they did before." I said, "You really need a strong." presence and they said oh no no that's not true people will always come back or come back to you know and I said nah, I don't really see that I said I'm not saying people aren't going to come back in person but yeah. you really if you're a company that does fitness um, you really want to have an, a strong online presence and then one of my clients who I do psychic work helping them like strategize in their life you know career goals and mm-hmm. all that um because they have a business, they're always doing demographics and this, te- you know, their company does all that kind of marketing and, you know, five years out, ten years out projection, what's going on. And when I was giving them what I was getting psychically, they said, oh, my God, you're right. And I said, oh, really? It's happening already? Because I thought it was further off. And they said, yeah. no, there's been all this research that people realize how long it takes them to go to classes especially if they have kids, yeah. you know, they got to get dressed, they got to drive there, they do the course, and then they got to drive back. And if it's at night or traffic and picking up yeah. kids and this and that, that and this. So parking. There, there has, parking, yeah, so there has been a substantial dent. So not as many people returned or a lot of people returned and then went back to the online, even job, even career, you know, uh, a lot of people say, oh, it's fine if you want to remotely work. We trust you. You did a good job. So, yeah, I would say for you both, and I definitely get you have very strong healing energy mm. in your hands, and I feel you could even work like with energy healing, Reiki, pranic healing, anything with um, hands-on. Now, when I tune in on a soul level, I get a very above you, it's like an orb of light. Um, I don't know if your aura has a lot of, I'm sensing a lot of indigo. Um, mm-hmm. I get a lot with you with communication. I get astrology, communication, writing, and blogging. So it could even mm-hmm. be mini blogging like on X and Insta. Um, you could even write at some point. But I really feel the astrology, there's a st- real strong love for you with that. That's yeah. What I'm getting. Beautiful. What do you think, Alyssa? 
What do you think? I Alexis? love that. Yeah. I mean, I um, my Instagram is basically where I do all of my astrology now. And oh, you do? I'm, oh, I'm perfect. Like, yeah. I'm old school. Like, I've actually built my business entirely by word of mouth. I don't even have a website, which is yeah. a huge honor because I've built my business off of word of mouth referrals. But I'm at a place in my career and in my practice where I'm wanting to access more people and to expand. So it's really kind of a question of am I bringing I would do the website. I myself, too. I've, I've never had to advertise. I've always been through referrals. But I will tell yeah. you, a lot of companies now, even regular my tech, people that I work with in the mainstream world, tech, even tech, they rarely look at resumes anymore the re- they look at bio and and references uh-huh. and website and and your socials yeah so people that are wanting to be an expert in your field and that doesn't mean and that could be the metaphysic that could be a cult body mind spirit it doesn't matter even people in the techie world that i work with or or you know main you know more mainstream uh they'll tell me they ask for their socials and to you know to see you know, is this really your thing? Um, so I would right. say a website anchors the energy and gives yeah. people a place to go for for re, for resources. Yeah, yeah. And do so, you feel like part of what I'm questioning right now is opening a physical space or doing this work more like pop up and from wherever I am and online? Like, do you see me with an actual physical business? soon or is this kind of more free form? I feel online with you. I feel hands. online. Yes. I feel online. Now if you want to do pop ups with like little mashups with other people. Yeah. You know, collabs or something or go to different bookstores or what I think that would be great for you. But I feel like you could have a really good – I'm not just saying that. People that listen to my podcast a lot I, and on private <laughs> client, I don't say stuff I don't see. Like if somebody says, oh, my God, I, I had a dream, I'm going to be this, and I'll just go, mm-hmm. Yeah, if you hear me, people that know me where clients or longtime listeners that are clients, they'll say, yeah, I knew you weren't feeling it or you thought it was BS. You didn't. You just did the Michelle, mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. And we'll see. <laughs> but Alexa, I think you could do really, really well. I really do. I think do you, you feel that I'm it. hiring someone to help me with that online expansion, or is it something oh, that just happens organic? Oh, yeah, the road. Just start. Well, just organic. Just start small. Just start small, where you're just posting what you like or love and. Well, you you know, don't even worry about how many times you post or whatever. I I feel like it's going to take off more than um, – and there's also something interesting. I don't know if it's by how you look or how you post or your vibe or you have your style, but I think there's something catchy about you, at least what I can see psychically. <laughs> so I would I would just – I would go for it. I would just do it. I would just go for it and play and have fun, and then I think you're going to build it into some kind of – um, business, but your soul loves this, wants to definitely expand out of the body work. Yeah. I think you're going to move completely Beautiful. out of it. That's my sense. Yeah, that's my sense. Oh, it's so special to me, but it's definitely something my body is asking to stop doing as much as I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, you can phase out or you could do it here and there. You could do it for friends or loved ones. And um, I get it. I trained in... Um, well, obviously, energy work, pranic healing, Reiki. I did do uh, anatomy, physiology, and uh, physiotherapy in, in uh, England and massage therapy. So I think it's great Ooh. to have in your kit. But when you said astrology, this, like, orb appeared. So you must have, like, yeah. a guide that's very, you know, astrology-based somehow is coming through that filtering. Beautiful. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you so much. Well, I'm, I'm glad, so glad you got called. To talk to you today. Yeah, that was very cool. All right, you take care. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, we're gonna get to our guest. Let's see, Jay in the chat. Thanks so, so much for caring about my fur babies. I have a lot of cancer in my son. Oh, and these beings are children to me, even though I have had three of my own. Thanks again. You're welcome, Jay. I will definitely put them in the healing light circle. And um, I think animal be you know, they're like people. Some are more conscious. Some are like people. 
better than people, but some some animal beings are very high. Let's just put it this way, and everybody who knows my Yoshi that I had was way more conscious. I've had two, a couple, few, a couple very conscious or three very conscious animal beings that were more conscious than human. Okay, so not all humans are of the same consciousness level. So nothing is of the same consciousness level. You know, we have varying degrees. Any who who who? All right, gang. Uh, Time for our awakening dialogue. I'm kind of excited about this. Uh, we have author Karina Marshall and uh, so much more. We'll be diving into what she does. But her book, in case you guys want to Google it and search for it, is Discover and Use Your Greatest Superpowers, Metaphysics, Spirituality, and Bubblegum. <laughs> I'm curious about the last one. Hi, Karina. Welcome to the program. Welcome. Hello, Michelle. Thank you so much for uh-huh. having me. I, I so appreciate it. You're welcome. It's great to connect with you. Now, i got to ask you, for. I do want to know about you, whatever you want to share. And um, But I do want to know about the title and, of course, where the bubble gum fits in. I'm sure a lot of people say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, well, yeah. Well, you know, I have always felt that uh, ever since I was a little girl, uh, that there was something more beyond just the physical world. You know, I refer to that uh, invisible world as non-physical. And um, Mm -hmm. I'm sure a a number of your listeners are already familiar with that area. Um, But I was also born with a lively imagination, and uh, which was my healthy escape. (laughs) Um, Oh yeah, hear that aspect of yeah, the creative aspect of my thinking and emotions. And um, I I I have a profession or identity aside from being a vibrational transformation coach. I uh, also do project management, and I'm also in the real estate business. So how does that all work, right? Uh, well, I've wow. always felt there was something more than just, quote, unquote, earning a living, uh, but that I could mm-hmm. integrate it with what I feel I know. And I wanted to share that through by writing my book um, about the non-physical aspects of our, of our beings, our consciousness, which, that will allow us to feel more empowered uh, despite all the things that we're reading in the news and, and all yeah. that stuff. So um and I, I I the subtitle of the book is Metaphysics, Spirituality and Bubblegum. Uh Bubblegum was meant to catch your attention and I think it does. It is. Uh, but <laughs> but but also it's because everybody can relate to chewing gum, right? I mean it's yeah. and when we chew gum it, we're thinking nothing of it. It's just a relaxation thing for some people and um and you don't really it's, it's, see that as an additional way of learning something and that's what i'm trying to you know create in my book the uh, an accessible language where we could really uh relate to what is being um messaged there uh as a way to look at ourselves how powerful we are and how to do it. I, I create some tools. I created some tools, and you can read it in the book. And that's meant to also help the reader get to another level of their consciousness. So mm. I hope it, it does. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm sure we'll dive more into that. And I love that you do more because I've had, I, I don't know if you want to call secular kind of, if this is like, uh, like I think we do our soul's purpose, our soul call, in a lot of different ways, and it's not so much what we do, but how we do it. So the fact that you mm-hmm. also talk about, you know, that you were involved in real estate, um, I'm always talking about that on the program, especially since back in the day I did I was a, I did modeling, I did acting, I was a teacher. Oh, okay. If I was anything Wonderful. else. Yeah, I mean, so I, but I was always psychic. I always did my path. You know, I was always, so I think yeah. this idea of, of this, like, you can't be a, a, a this because you're a that, you know, because you bring your consciousness um, into whatever you're doing. So I love that you do a wide breadth of things, a very, you know, I, I'm sure the way that you approach some of the stuff that you do, especially like real estate, um, you know, you're bringing your consciousness into that, 
right? Exactly. So it's going to be different uh, well, than someone that doesn't have that consciousness, right? Exactly, yes. Uh, initially, uh, when I first started in real estate 15 years ago, uh, as a result of um, trying to be to spend more time with my family when I had my daughter, um, you know, I wasn't as conscious as I am now. Uh, and, of course, I'm not saying that I'm fully conscious at this point. I'd like to think I'm a yeah. little bit more conscious than before. But uh, in the past, uh, I, said, I said to myself, I, and I've always been drawn to spirituality and mm. topics mm. related to that, and I said to myself, well, I'm going to leave real estate because it's too... Uh, you know, it's such a, a, um, a challenging career for me because I'm dealing with people's emotions most of the time. <laughs> and I said, I'll just become a coach. Uh, but the universe has responded back to me. Uh, and uh, now I, when I look back, I'm saying, because the universe w- wanted me to be able to integrate spirituality with whatever walk of life or, li- or earning a living, so to speak, uh, I'm involved with, and uh, and true enough, that's really I I feel that is the the secret of life. You can celebrate and enjoy it, no matter what you're doing, wherever you are, and you can access this knowing um, by just understanding a few things that probably have been hampering us because of the beliefs that we grew up with. Yes, I agree, and I love what you say because. I had, um, and actually I still work with this person on and up, a private client who also was in real estate and had the same thing, was thinking of leaving and then realized it was their passion. In fact, they did commercial real estate and then they went into homes and they said, I love finding the perfect home for people. I love, they love, yes. I don't know, baking, mm-hmm. the staging, everything. They And they said, that's my <laughs> gift. The way that I do it and I'm bringing them their perfect home and helping them, you know, I don't know, giving suggestions and this and that. So I think, I, I just think what you're saying is so important because so many people, I feel at one stage in their awakening, think I have to give this up if I'm going to quote unquote be spiritual. I have to give this yes. up and do something else, right? That mm-hmm. looks a certain way. Right. Yeah. But it, you, what you don't have to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so how what was your transition and I then I'm reading your soulmate Craig a yoga monk for 35 years. That that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Karina, we can jump to I that. Love it. You're like a little package that just keeps opening up with little surprises. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um I, I I think uh, I mentioned to you that um, oh I'll mention it in in the book actually that um, about tw- well I was married for 23 years and uh, okay. felt I had a good marriage but uh, mm-hmm. after uh, during the last uh, probably three to four years of that marriage um, um, we had a falling out and so it was time for us to separate and at that time I. I, 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 when my daughter was already uh, finished with college, I was able to live by myself. Um, you know, the Karina, who has been a wife, um, a mother, and a family person all my life. So it was the first mm-hmm. time I, I learned how to live by myself, and uh, I, I really uh, felt rewarded because I learned so much about myself, and I learned my inner world. Uh, through mm. meditation and um, you know spirituality and attending workshops and listening to podcasts like yours, um, so it was just a calling of my soul uh, to understand who I really am. And at that time, I realized I can be happy on my own. And when I yeah. shifted to that consciousness, I met Craig, the, my husband currently, and um, he was. He was a yoga monk for 35 years, um, and uh, I met him when he was already 10 years out of the ashram, uh, and uh, we resonated because he was also uh, involved with his inner world, and uh, we had this uh, consciousness level that resonated with what we wanted to do with our lives, and so that's how it happened. <laughs> mm. So how did you... Um how when you okay you were doing the real estate how did you trans what what was the 
kind of like the spiritual awakening where you started thinking differently or looking differently. Was it through the divorce or was it before that? Or was there some kind of trigger, let's say? I really think that whenever we have a um, a contrast or um, a painful Contra, yeah. or even traumatic, mm-hmm. uh, I would call it contrast, but traumatic experience maybe in, in one's life, it's really a catalyst for awakening and uh you're right you know when i um got divorced and uh and um started to live on my own it's like who am i you know my identity has always mm-hmm. been either a wife a mother or um a family person so uh at mm-hmm. that time um after i left my career and became um a pro- i was a project manager as well in the defense contracting industry uh, which is more in information technology. When I left that career and got into real estate, uh, I started getting uh, an understanding of what my life is about, and I felt that service is something that I'm passionate with and that I could serve whatever and whoever in whatever fashion, but I have to serve myself first uh, by understanding, mm-hmm. you know, where my... Um, where, where where my fulfillment comes from, and that's from my inner world. And um, that led to, to me understanding what my next step is. And um, I, 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 I looked into um, um, becoming a spiritual coach because I felt like that was, that was calling me. And uh, one thing led to another. I relocated to California 12 years ago. And uh, the energy in California is so wonderful, and it was so encouraging of this focus in my life. And so I started doing vibrational transformation coaching, um, which I feel is an important aspect of how we deal with the current reality that we're facing. Mm -hmm. So you, so how did the quest start? How did you know where to go? Were the did you just start reading or researching? Did someone talk to you? Did you, you know, did you reach out? How was that quest? That's a great question. Leading to your inner I, quest. I just had a flashback of the answer, and I remember. Ah! Um, <laughs> I remember about maybe 14 years ago, I couldn't sleep, and I went online, and somehow I I was cruising the web, and and there was this Law of Attraction workshop by Esther Hicks. Um, and uh, I I got so interested in attending that workshop and it was a cruise to Alaska. And uh, I started understanding more and more the natural laws of the universe through the messages that were being relayed there. And I, underst- I started to understand the nature of uh, vibration and energy and realize that we're all vibrational beings, my thoughts, my feelings, and my beliefs. So um, that's how it started. And I said, during the pandemic, when it happened, the lockdown that we all experienced, I um, I said, I have to share uh, with other people what I feel um, is helping me deal with this pandemic lockdown, that we don't have to feel like we're powerless. Uh, that we have the ability to transcend it. And um, so that led me to this journey. Mm. Wow. I just feel like you, there was a little a little a inner clock ticking, you know. <laughs> like it's, right, ta- yeah. it's time now. And, and with your background, now that's the interesting. So defense. The military. What, I, I I didn't quite hear what you were doing. It was something administrative or executive? What was? It's more. It's more. I wouldn't call it executive, but it's more technical. It's a project oh, management technical. of uh, oh, military project. and civilian agency um, communication networks, information technology, and so most of my uh, colleagues were ex-military and men, male. <laughs> okay. So, so and it's really an interesting perspective, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, because I understand project management from like a a design, like, oh, we're working on this pro. I guess it could go for any project, right? You're managing the project. Yes. 
Yeah, yeah. that's right. Well, we design, we used to design communication systems and then install it, furnish, and then manage it, depending on the contract, of course. And my role as a project manager is to oversee um, the different aspects of the contract and make sure that um, it's implemented according to how the contract is uh, agreed upon. Uh, that was that seems like a very long time ago, <laughs> but, but it helped me with my current skills. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you because I feel like you're doing that, like people with soul contracts and helping them awaken, and giving them the yeah. tools to communicate what they're meant to do. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I felt that. Um, it, I'm, I, I really appreciate everything that's happened in my life, the ups and downs, and it's made me who I am. And um, because of those experiences, I feel that I have expanded in my consciousness because during those ups and downs, I kept asking many questions. And I feel mm. that when we ask questions, we activate our um, our journey towards expanding our consciousness. So um, I think it was great. <laughs> yeah. That reminds me of my guide saying, the questions open the channel. We really need to ask the questions, don't we? We really need yes. to. I agree. That self yeah. In- yeah, that self-inquiry. I know when I'm not asking questions, that means my little self is kind of in control because it's not it's you know it's been cruising and it's it's kind of you know got raised in consciousness but not quite is the higher consciousness um one of the things i'd like to ask you about and you do talk about it in your uh, book and i think it's so important this whole idea of creating well two things reframing what's happened to us or what's happening to us and, and creating a reality shift and and if you don't mind, I'd like to focus a little bit on that because I feel like that's where so many of us are at right now individually and as a collective. Um, mm-hmm. We've been talking a lot mm-hmm. on this podcast about you know chaos magic and chaos theory, that there's a lot of creative energy right now. It looks like chaos or confusion, but it is causing, I think to, to utilize it, you ha- we have to reframe what's happened to us yeah. or what's going yeah. on, right? I totally agree. And uh, reframing, um, I could potentially um, invite the person listening right now to say um, reframing is also engaging your witness consciousness Mm -hmm. during these troubled times. You know, we observe and uh, practice, try to practice compassion rather than react because, uh, you know, with, it's important to witness ourselves and our feelings in various situations and um, and to trust that the transformation that is happening as a result of of witnessing what's going on, whether you like it or not, that we have the choice to to, to choose, for instance, love over fear, uh, empowerment over limitation, uh, compassion over hatred. Uh, oneness over separation and and I feel joy over all conditions and and I mm-hmm. realize that of course we're all you know it's really sometimes um challenging when we're when it's on our face uh and and the primary uh, source of um of of that would be the news or when we turn on our our uh phones and our uh, and our TV so um mm-hmm. Try to limit it <laughs> and mm, uh, and, okay. and see where you can focus to the next better feeling place. Mm. Yeah. So limiting what limits our consciousness is what I'm hearing you say. Well, uh, well, engaging the witness consciousness, meaning um, try to observe and and but uh, try not to react. And when it's too, uh, if it's when, when it's producing too much of a negativity within you, try to shift your focus to something else, um, yeah. something that feels a little better. Go for a walk, take a nap, take a shower. Um, yeah. Look at pictures that give you, you know, that that uh, that make you smile or help you remember exciting things in your lives. 
so there there are a number of tools that I mention in my book, uh, actually 16 metaphysical tools uh, that I share to give the uh, reader a start. Uh, and yeah. these metaphysical tools are nothing, they're very simple, uh, and yeah. they're really meant to manage our minds. So hopefully yeah. that helps. Yeah. Well, I remember one of my teachers and mentors, one of my professors, just say that's a lot of what we're doing here is learning how to manage like our mind, our energy, you know, really. That's what we're – once sure. we learn – once we – right, we learn kind of our our baseline or what we're about and we understand and to, to manage. And and I love what you were saying about, um, you know, things that are too dissonant or, or, or you know, contrast because that will always – that as you know, that's part of the, the, the world and the universe – but to understand ourselves from that place of witness, self or detached observer, with kindness of, oh, I'm taking too much of this in, whether it's a type That's of food right. or, like you said, news yeah. or something. And I feel, I feel like not enough people do that. Um, and I think it's a really good point that you make um, here and in the book is that, again, it's knowing oneself um, to know, you know what, that's, that's going to have negatively impact me listening to mm-hmm, this or watching mm-hmm. this this many days in a row or whatever it is. Um, so I think that's uh, important. Yeah. You know, you know, Michelle, I also wanted to just add here, because it's a really important aspect and message in the book uh, with, with what I've learned from many teachers of truth, is that, mm-hmm. um, you know, there's really two of us, <laughs> Each one of yeah. us. One is that uh, the, con- the, reg- the the personal consciousness that we have in the physical form, but there's also a larger part of us that's in the non-physical part of our yeah. universe, and 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 that's really important, I think, as a framework for creating our reality. Because uh, unless you have that non-physical aspect uh, understanding, it's very hard to. Everything seems um, seems foreign to to you, so um, yeah. so it's really important to connect those two and be able to realize that whatever we're thinking, whatever we're feeling, and and what our beliefs, whether our beliefs limit or empower us, is really mirroring to us the reality that we are facing, and and that's not just on an individual level, but as you, we both know, it it's also contributing to our collective reality. Yes. Yes. I so agree. That's like that in it this is a horrible paraphrase, but Einstein's, you know, saying of that basically that in essence we don't solve problems, we outgrow them. You know, our consciousness <laughs> shifts yeah. and expands. Yeah. So yeah. I agree yeah. with you. That is so important is to understand that infinite self, that portal or unlimited self or infinite to the vibrational sh- higher self you know getting out of that personal the personality mm-hmm. um i think that alone if people would just do mo- more of that as a practice um yeah you know don't make decisions from the wounding or that little the personality ego just bump up get up there get out there expand there you like, go you know, yeah right <laughs> Yeah, there's a famous uh, book by Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now. And in the first chapter of that book, I quote, he says, If I cannot live with myself, there must be two of me. Because there was a point in time in his life where, it, you know, he really didn't understand what the world was about and he couldn't uh, take it anymore. And he said, I can't mm-hmm. live with myself anymore. And so... At that point, he realized there was something more than just his physical form. So that was, to me, like 20 years ago, it was an inspirational, thought-provoking, life-giving message. (laughs) Yeah. Well, we had at one point, um, because I'm a big proponent of the subtle subtle energy connecting in vibrationally beyond the lower self, and we had... um, Yes. A physicist, Dr. Maynard, uh, who, and I was shocked. I've so many out of the hundreds and hundreds of people we've had from all kinds, you know, even physicists, uh, everything. 
he was the only one, and he had a small chapter. He didn't have much, but he talked about just what you're talking about, the less denser physical self, the, the subtle energy, and being able to expand into that field, that resonant field or Rupert Sheldrake morphogenic field, what's actually going mm-hmm. to be on the morphogenic field. And I really, you know, by our conversation and my experience and understanding is, I mean, that is key. Like you said, we have to be able to get out of the limited you know, embrace that part, but that our answers and our our, our true, you know, joy, problem solving answers, next step, evolution, whatever is is not in that lower self. That's I always look at the lower self. It's like a an old hard drive, and in fact, it is old hard drive. I, I like that, <laughs> right? Because what can only hold, I think, sixteen yeah. bits of it, right of information. So <laughs> that's really. Right, and it's full, <laughs> yes. and it's full of recycled thoughts, isn't it, Michelle? Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of recycling going on there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Korean, and, and that's, that's where the yeah, feeling of program. boredom comes from. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, all the old programs are just sitting there, like it it, it doesn't update. Um, but yeah, to to teach people or show people how to get out of that. And then, and to me, it's just habit. I mean, I know that all the time. I just kind of pop in. It's like, especially if I'm having trouble with something, I just stop. I go, okay, stop trying to think about it or figure mm-hmm, it out. Cause mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. it. Just like you said earlier, I go for a walk. Um, I had a conversation with someone earlier today, and they said, yeah, it's it's doing the dishes, it's the shower, it's the bathroom, and it's going to the walk. The 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 the, the pearls of the down, the hooking up. The yeah, and the and pets and, and our pets and our pets uh, yeah. play a really important in yeah. balancing our energies because they keep us in the present moment. Uh, yeah. We have a cat ourselves, and um, we, we just love her. We we call her our Zen teacher. <laughs> yeah, that's what I saw. Zen. Yeah, that. Uh, yeah, cats or any animal being, if you really, especially cats any and dogs, you yeah. pay attention, any animal, but it, a lot of people have mm-hmm. cats and dogs. And there's, um, I, uh, yeah, some of my greatest teachers have been my cat or dog. I mean, I don't, I look at an animal being. Some of them, sometimes they're, like I, I said at the beginning of the podcast, some animal beings are more conscious than people. They just, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Once you understand their yeah. languaging, it's like, oh mm-hmm. my God. You you know mm-hmm. you know you, you think of sometimes dogs those stories and I've heard cats doing things like this too where they've saved people uh, alerted them to something mm-hmm. um, it's just uh, it's just amazing when that uh, if you're gifted in that way to have that kind of you know experience right. or situation mm. but on a, on Karina, an ordinary let, day. Go ahead. Sorry. Mm. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll remember. I'll remember. No, I was just say, saying that with uh, pets uh, in general on any ordinary day, you know, they are, to me, uh, they help me shift my focus. Mm. And um, that's the key to um, not being too bogged down by the challenge or the negativity that might be confronting you at the moment. <clears throat> just mm. shift your focus. Um, play with your pet. Look at a nice picture, have a cup of coffee, have a um, a scoop of ice cream, whatever it takes. Just mm-hmm. get to the next better feeling place. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, and biochemically creating that dopamine. We can give ourselves our own positive, right, validation or response. Mm. We can really, um, mm. I was watching something earlier today, and I don't even know the podcast. It was some, it was a uh, some kind of doctor and researcher, but he was talking about getting going, or if you're a bit depressed or down, it's a cycle. And he mm. was talking about what helps us get out of stuff loops like that is when we really acknowledge ourselves and celebrate it, like real, like oh, you did, oh. It. you got that done. You come. he said, what causes the the burnout or you know the su- kind of the downward cycle, which I thought was fascinating, was we keep just stacking. We keep stacking mm-hmm. to do, stack, 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 instead of the pause of, oh, my God, look what you did. Look how much you got done. Oh, my God, that's great. Like we would mm-hmm. to a, a, a child, 
you know, which we should mm-hmm. to our own inner mm-hmm. child, like, oh, my God, look what you did. This is great. Look, you got this done. You got this. You finally done this. You finished. Oh, that looks amazing. And I thought, I did it this morning. And I thought, oh, I'm going to try this. See, just see if it's <laughs> BS or, you know, I'm like, and um, yeah. I was already, I get but I felt different. I felt, I mean, I already felt good. I was feeling, but I thought, mm-hmm. could it, could I have a noticeable little something? And Karina, I'll tell yeah. you, I did. I had like a little, I don't know, a little like upliftment kind of thing. And I thought, my Wonderful, gosh, it yeah. really does work. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Right? Well, I get that, Michelle, because I talk to my higher self all the time. <laughs> of course, I don't talk to it lo- loudly because those people will think I'm crazy. Yeah. But I, I do have this conversation that goes in my head, um, you know, whether I'm appreciating or just kind of, uh, sharing what what I feel I'm experiencing or feeling, and um, after a while, um, uh, you know, you'll be surprised. I'll be. I was surprised uh, when I was receiving thoughts from my higher self. I felt and 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 I know they're not me because sometimes you, I say, "How could I ever think that way?" You know, it's you know that it's inspired. Yeah. It's came from you know when it's something not beyond you, your little you. Exactly. No, I agree with you. But then you know, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah, I think that getting in that habit of receiving, and I think that's where we're going more and more is mm. receiving that impulse, that inspiration, and then moving into inspired action. What are you receiving mm-hmm. from that higher aspect of you? Um, now, mm-hmm. Karina, I'm kind of curious. We're talking about your book, which obviously is available Amazon, all the good places, Barnes and Noble, right? Every um, yeah place. Do you have a website, by the way? I didn't see that, so I don't. I know. do. I know you're on uh, Insta. Uh, it's, yeah, it's uh, unlimited dot us. Um, unlimited. Okay. Uh, unlimited. Uh, sorry, unlimited self dot us. That's the website. And you can, okay. uh, it says a little bit something about me. and It's a simple website, but um, uh, you can connect and ask questions. I would love to hear from you um, because we're all in this together and we're co-creating oh, this yeah. next transformation. And um, it will be, it's actually, despite all the negativity that we, we hear from the news, it's, I feel yeah. that it's also a very exciting time for all of us because we are on the verge of a major <laughs> consciousness transformation. Yeah. Don't you think? I agree. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, I always look at it this way, too, and I, this is what I share with the people I come in contact with or work with. It's like, who's creating the new emerging conscious? It's not just going to happen by blinking our eyes or clicking our heels. We're doing it. So while all this... Absolutely. Th- Right? There's contrast, there's dissonance. That's never going to completely yes. go away. I mean, it could be mitigated, but we're meant to create at this time. And yeah, I see a lot of opportunities. I really do. And I see the higher level consciousness. I, I don't know about you if you notice this, but I will watch mm-hmm. a lot of different things all, all over, you know, just the whole gamut of what's going on on Earth. And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, my God, there it is, coming through. It's com- if you mm-hmm. look, you can see how things are Im- actually improving. There is improvement. There is a higher consciousness mm-hmm. coming through. Mm-hmm. There is mm-hmm. awakening in a lot of different areas. Um, it may, like you said earlier, it may not be on the news a lot. It may not getting a play. But even then, I, I can read between the lines. You can just see more people coming together. More. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the key, and maybe you have a thought on this of how not to get, because I do get this question a lot. How do I not get caught up in this? How do I get not get caught up in the dissonance? How do I not get caught up in the contrast or negativity? You know, how do I not get... So I don't know if you have any thought. I know you alluded to it a little bit with the news, but a lot of people feel like there's so much going on, they get caught up in mm-hmm. it, and then they lose their well, motivation and inspiration. Right, yeah. Well, the first uh, the first practical <laughs> tool is, Turn off the TV or in the news, but uh, <laughs> but of course, uh, seriously, um, if you if, if uh, I guess one needs to understand that we live in a world of energy, and energy consists of vibrations. So vibrational living um, mm. basically means that uh, if you are watching the news and you are 
you are tuning in to that energy. So you're getting caught up while you're tuning in and listening to it. So the way to tune out of it is to realize that whatever is already in the news has already manifested, meaning it's done. So every time we think of a new thought, we are creating that new energy, new forms of uh, summoning the energy to manifest the next physical form. So it's really important that we are, you know, we, we watch what we're thinking. We watch how we're mm-hmm. judging people if and, and really refrain from judging <laughs> if possible. Mm-hmm. Um, because we are... That's interesting because you're could, right. It's already mm-hmm. happened. That's right. If it's in the news, it's already happened. Exactly. But we play a role yeah. in vibrational yeah. consciousness. We play a role in creating the next level of of what we're going to see manifest in the physical world. That's all vibration. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Very good point. Yeah, it's all vibration. And if, yeah, do we contribute to that vibration or not? Do we let that vibration impinge upon us or not? I think that's a part of. Yeah, and and you know, it sounds very serious because oh, vibration. What is that? But uh, another key to to uh, just really um, creating the joy or the heaven on earth is just to celebrate life and to appreciate appreciation of something that you, you take for granted. Um, appreciation mm. is a really high form of energy and vibration that helps with uh, attracting to your life uh, the things that you are desiring more than tuning into. Uh, somebody else's movie of uh, the news, so yeah. to speak. Uh, we have that power within us, and um, we don't realize it, but we are really powerful vibrational beings. Yeah. Yeah. We are powerful creators and co-creators, too, that's for sure. That's. Um, yeah. I think that's going to be more and more evident as we go further yeah. along in this awakening, I think people are really awakening, um, awakening to that for sure. I love all, discover, and one thing you do go in your book is how to kind of discover, um, in a way, what you want or want to do, your calling or your in your superpowers. What are your how to access mm-hmm. those? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 There, um, okay. I present 16 metaphysical tools that will amplify mm-hmm. your powers of intention, intuition, mm-hmm. uh, visualization is really important, and focus. Uh, but more mm-hmm. importantly, also understanding the subtle world of energy. Yeah. So um, that's it. You know, I'm, we're subtle just reminding each other who who we are, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thanks to your program that we have this opportunity to share uh, what uh, may have been uh, our uh, own realizations of what might, uh, how we may help each other in this transformation that we're undergoing um, consciously. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's why I so feel so blessed, but also enjoy the conversations that I get to have and hearing what other people are doing and um, giving examples or tools uh, for not just the listeners but myself, you know, and just to talk like this, it just, I feel for a lot of people it makes it more real to have these conversations, mm-hmm. like it's not something just in a book, it's not academic, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, mm-hmm. it's not theory, it's practical, this is a practicum, you can do this with practice, this can be your reality. And I love, because yeah. you're talking about superpowers within, then people begin to realize, oh, that's innate. That is within. Mm. Yes, definitely, right? yes. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's so powerful. Uh, well, I did re- uh, read parts of your book. I'm probably going to read a bit more. Uh, it, it really, you have some, I love that it's simple. Because my teachers, they always said, if you can't explain it simply, you don't know it. That's what they told me. Like if you're hemming and hawing or take (laughs) five paragraphs to say something you could say in two sentences, like you don't really understand the concept, you don't know it. So that's my – I think simple is really good. (laughs) Thank you, yes. Yes. Really do. 
Oh, Karina, this has been wonderful to connect with you. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing. Oh, yes, same here, Michelle. Thank you for being our soul friend because uh, you've been an inspiration and the energy, just the energy of your voice is uh, has Mm. this, uh, you know, it has this spark to really engage people in uh, in sharing uh, their often authentic selves, and I appreciate your your oh. I appreciate you very much. Oh, thank you. Likewise, I really enjoyed this conversation too. So come back anytime you want to. Um, I love what you're doing. I love the way that you've outlined the the book. It's a bit of a it's kind of a journey, the way that you did it. It's kind of, this really has an unfolding. You know, one part leads to the net, you know, kind of builds a nice foundation. So mm-hmm. I think that's very helpful and supportive for people that are wanting to know more about this. It's good to to have something that leads to a foundation, not just kind of, like I said, concepts. Mm-hmm. Oh, Sue is saying, thank you both. Enjoyed the conversation. Me too, Sue, in the chat. Yes, thank me you. as well. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, Karina. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Take care. And you too. And you too. It's been an honor. Take care. Thank you. You too. Take care. Bye. All right. If you just scooted in, that was Karina Marshall. The book is Discover and Use Your Greatest Superpowers, Metaphysics, Spirituality, and Bubblegum. So you can find that. Um, also, uh, website, unlimitedself.us. Yeah. Thank you all for being here and sharing, everyone. Um, Nice convo. Thanks, Jay. Have an awesome week. You too, Jay. Have a great week. Everyone, have a wonderful week. And uh, enjoy the magic. Use the magic. And I love, we talked a bit about, you know me, I'm a big lover of subtle energy. Tap into that subtle energy field, especially if you're feeling a little collapsed, feeling a little fear. Um, I have, I think, well, on my website, the focus meditation. Um, actually, just reminded me to give this to a client. Uh, <laughs> writing myself a note. But that helps you. It's also an alignment meditation. That helps you connect into the subtle energy. Soulplayground.life, meditation and mindfulness. Um, you can use that. I hope I remember who that was for. Um, Also, love if you could subscribe to Soul Insights and Tarot on YouTube. And also, please, Awakenings with Michelle Mache podcast on YouTube as well. Um, Come connect with me on Instagram. Uh, I do have a Soul Juice there. I do weekly tune-ins. Also, um, channelings that can be helpful. Just say hi. If you connect in any of those places, let me know that You listen to Awakenings, and if you called in, let me know you called in. All right, Radiant Soul Lights, lots of love, light, wisdom, and as always, continue to shine your light, share your insights, and of course, keep awake. Awakenings broadcasts every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Pacific Time. Archive shows available on iTunes. For continued awakened conversations and insights, join the Awakenings group on Facebook. And check out Michelle's blog at soulplayground.com. And keep awake. All the many headlines constantly swirling around. How do you plan for your future, your retirement? Well, I wrote a book with you in mind. These and other questions will be answered with my book, Not Your Father's Retirement. Now go to MahoneyGPS.com. That's MahoneyGPS.com under publications and download your free copy. Not Your Father's Retirement, chapter by chapter, will build strategies to help you on your way. You have more control than you think you do. That's MahoneyGPS.com. Come visit us. With year-end approaching, it's time to get to the bottom of your bottom line with Zero. That's Zero, spelled X-E-R-O. Zero is accounting software that makes closing your books seamless. 
with your numbers in one place. Organizing and reporting back on your finances can be much easier, saving you time so you can focus on your business goals instead of spreadsheets. Get financial peace of mind and make the switch to Zero today. Learn more at xero.com. Zero accounting software for better business.